Hi, this is Kathy Dam, and we're going to run through an example of a sample Z test. Make sure you feel comfortable with it. The wording on this particular example is a little bit uh, thick, but let's see if we can get through it. So Robbins and John carried out a study on narcissism. This is comparing people who had scored high versus low on a narcissism questionnaire. So an example item was, if I ruled the world, it would be a better place. They also had other questionnaires, including one that had an item about how many times the participant looked in the mirror on a typical day. They hypothesized that people who scored high on the narcissism scale look in the mirror significantly more often than people who do not score high on the scale, because a lot of research suggests having high narcissism increases looking behaviors. So based on previous research, it is known that on average, a person looks in the mirror 4.8 times per day with a standard deviation of 2.6. Taking a sample of 25 narcissistic individuals, they find a mean of 6.3 visits to the mirror per day. Do the six steps to inferential stats to see if narcissistic people look in the mirror more. I should say that we will preface this on assuming that this is a normally distributed uh, distribution of narcissistic people. I should have said that in there. So one thing I wanna highlight before we move on is this piece here. A lot of research suggests having high narcissism increases looking behaviors. So that's our alert that we may be justifying ourselves for a one tail test. Okay, so let's see if we can do the six steps. So for our research question here are our options. Do narcissistic people look in the mirror differently? Do narcissistic people look in the mirror more? Do narcissistic people look in the mirror less? And then this would be where you tell me, I don't know how to do this. So again, these are all comparing to non-narcissistic people. I want you to take a look at this and see which one of these would work for the prompt that we just saw. So remember we had that previous research comment in there. So I'll give you a second to think about it. And our answer is B, do narcissistic people look in the mirror more? We can, we're justified to do a one tail test. So even though you should default to two tails, we have enough reason to do a one tail test in this particular example. So we're gonna move forward with the one tail. All right, so let's do step two. Let's define our null hypothesis. So which one of these most closely resembles what you have set out for yourself? Narcissistic people look in the mirror differently. Narcissistic people look in the mirror more. Narcissistic people look in the mirror less or the same. Narcissistic people do not look in the mirror differently. And then again, the last option is always for you to tell me that you're not sure how we do this one. I should have chosen a different word. Narcissistic is hard to say fast. So while you're looking at these, try to see if you can figure out which would be appropriate to cross off right away. So look through the process of elimination. Are there any in there that would never work as a null hypothesis? So people looking in there differently would never work because that's an implied difference. And we're looking for things that indicate that things are the same. People looking in the mirror more, again, is implying a, a difference and we're, we need to have some essence of there being similarity. Even if it's a um, one-tailed test and we are going to be looking at the same or less or the same or more, there has to be some element of the, of the participants being, sorry, of the people being the same. So in this case, narcissistic people look in the mirror less or the same. I know that sounds weird, but I'm trying to just catch you a little bit in case you were trying to look for, do not look in the mirror more. That be, would be another way of saying C, but these are equivalent. Narcissistic people do not look in the mirror more would be the same as saying, narcissistic people look in the mirror less or the same. So uh, make sure you just feel comfortable with how those are similar so that you don't get tripped up um, if the wording is different than what you're expecting. All right, so then which one of these would work as all our alternative hypothesis? Narcissistic people look in the mirror differently. Narcissistic people look in the mirror more. Narcissistic people look in the mirror less or the same. Narcissistic people do not look in the mirror differently. I know some of these wordings are funny. So which one of these could we um, cross off immediately because it would never work as an alternative hypothesis? So for me, I can cross off C right away because it has the word the same. And since they're saying the same, the alternative hypothesis can never have that in there. That would only ever work for a null. So right off the bat, I can cross off C. So the more you can cross off because you know they wouldn't work, the less intimidating the question can be. 
So in this case, since we crossed that one off and we already kind of know what our research question is, um, oh, sorry, we can also cross off D, do not look in the mirror differently because that also implies that they're the same. I missed that one. So now we're only narrowing it down to two. It's A or B, and in this case, we're gonna choose B. All right, so moving on. We have done step one. We have done step two. If we were to write it out in symbols, it would look like this. See how it says mu sub n? The n stands for narcissistic people. Our overall mu was 4.8. So we can say the null hypothesis would be the mu of narcissistic people is less than or equal to the overall population rate of 4.8. And then the alternative would be the mu of narcissistic people is greater than the population rate of 4.8. So now we have to decide if it's one or two tail. So I'll give you a minute to think about that. Given the research question we had above, do you think it's one tailed, two tailed, or you get to pick and it doesn't matter? So in this case, it's one tailed. You don't just get to willy nilly pick. You have to decide whether it's one tailed or two tailed based on the research question and the previous research that you have available to you. So in this case, we have previous research, so we can do it as a one tailed test. So now that we've defined it as a one-tailed, which one of these describes our rejection region? More than 1.96 and less than negative 1.96? More than 1.65 or less than negative 1.65? More than 1.65, less than negative 1.65? And again, E is telling me that you don't remember how we do this. So let's see if there's anything that we can cross off right away. Maybe you thought B would never work and you were right. B could never be a possibility. When we are doing a one-tailed test, you don't have the 1.65 region on both sides of the distribution. If it's two-tailed, we will have to define the two tails as being more than 1.96 or less than negative 1.96. If it's one-tailed, we define it as either upper or lower. So upper would be more than 1.65 or the lower tail would be less than negative 1.65, but those can never be combined together because that would give you a 10% alpha rate. So in this particular example, our answer is C, more than 1.65. Now we have to do some math. So you wanna make sure you go back to the prompt and see if you can collect the numbers that are in there and appropriately assign them to their symbols. We have our overall mu is 4.8. Our standard deviation for the population is 2.6. Our sample size is 25. And then in this particular case, the sample mean was 6.3. So when you're doing this math, I want to remind you that students tend to make errors when they're not following the proper order of operations. And if you can't remember uh, PEMDAS or any of the acronyms, uh, sentences that work for that, try to remember this to solve from the bottom up. So I would recommend first solving for the square root of 25, which in this case would be five. Then take 2.6 and divide it by five. Once you've solved for that, then take your numerator and divide by the denominator that you found, and you'll come up with the answer of 2.88. So just make sure you follow the right order of operations, because if you just start plugging things into a calculator in the order that you see them, it won't be appropriate um, for you to find the right answer. All right, so we found our answer to be 2.88. Now we have to decide what to do with that. So we have a rejection region already defined. So we have to see, do we find that it's in the rejection region and reject HO? Do we fail to reject HO, accept HO, accept HA? And then again, you don't know how we do this step. So give me a second to think about if there are any in there that would never be right. And hopefully you identified these two, we never accept anything. We're always going to be talking about the null because that's the distribution we assume to be true. So we're either gonna reject it or fail to reject it. So the only two answers that would ever work for step five are A and B. In this particular case, because 2.88 is larger than the 1.65 number that defines our rejection region, we are going to reject HO. Now we have to decide what our take home statement is going to be. Narcissistic people look in the mirror more. Narcissistic people look in the mirror less or the same. Narcissistic people look in the mirror less. Narcissistic people look in the mirror differently. 
So thinking about our possible conclusions, are there any in here that really should not be a conclusion we ever make? So hopefully you identified, oops, the E is always our last one. Hopefully you identified that D would never work. Narcissistic people look in the mirror differently. If you find that your answer is significantly different from the population you're comparing it to, then you need to specify where that difference is. So even though you may have made a two-tailed um, test throughout, you need to make somewhat of a one-tailed conclusion if you reject the null. So you would never really end the statement with narcissistic people look in the mirror differently because you should follow up and say how. Imagine if you're talking to your friend and you say, oh, I found that narcissists are different. Your friend, if they're a good friend, should follow up and go, how are they different? What way was it more or was it less? So rather than asking them to probe you further, you should conclude that narcissistic people look in the mirror more. All right, so we've completed our six steps to inferential statistics for this example. This is the sample Z. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, I will be available via email or in my office hours.